I've been working on my bug out location and trying to figure out how to protect my small electronics from an EMP. So I've done a lot of research and I'm going to share the results of it with you and show you how to build your own Faraday cage. An EMP is an electromagnetic pulse that can cause damage to electrical components. They're caused by things like solar flares, solar coronal mass ejections. They're caused by nuclear devices, of course, and lightning. So let's be sure you understand what the risks are. Your power transmission lines cover the landscape for hundreds and thousands of miles. And those power lines are long enough to couple with the EMP that's emitted by the lightning which occurs at very low frequencies or very long wavelengths. Power transmission lines can gather the energy from lightning, transmit it right into your house, and if your computer's plugged into it, it will damage your computer, your telephone, your microwave, you know, whatever's plugged into it will be damaged by the voltage surge. So to protect your electronics from lightning strikes and the EMP that's emitted from a lightning strike, just unplug the stuff from the wall or use a surge protector. We hear about the danger of an EMP that's caused by a solar flare, and you don't have to really worry about that when it comes to small electronics that are not plugged in. Again, those events happen at frequencies that are too small to couple energy into very small electronic components, like integrated circuits or you know whatever you've got, your cell phone, uh, the electronics in your car. Those things are not going to be damaged by a solar flare. What we're talking about is an EMP that occurs at frequencies like one gigahertz, all right? That's a nuclear EMP. And so that's a wavelength of three tenths of a meter or about one foot. You've got components in here that are of a size that can be damaged by a wavelength that's about one foot long. So what you wanna do is completely shield these items from those radio transmissions. And the way you do that is by building a Faraday cage. The concept of building a Faraday cage is really simple. What you wanna do is put this inside of a metal container and keep this from touching the container itself. It's got to be completely surrounded. What we have here is an ammo can and it's made of metal, right? And it is conductive and so it will protect the contents but there's a couple of things you got to keep in mind. This table conducts. This ammo can is made of metal but because the paint, it's not conducting. The metal inside of the paint sandwich does conduct, and so that will work. The problem is, I don't want you to get tricked into putting your electronics in here in contact with the paint, because you think it doesn't conduct, but that's only because this tester operates at very low voltages, and the EMP is gonna generate very high voltages. So you can put your stuff inside of here, wrapped inside of a towel. You're not done yet, and here's why. I've got to make sure that I've got full contact all the way around. Now, I do have these lips, but the problem is I have these holes here. About the maximum gap that I want is one millimeter in order to offer, offer full protection. So I've got this gap here, and I've got the same problem going on with the hinge at the back and these corners. There's a simple solution. Get some metal tape, like some metal flashing tape, and tape it all the way around. If you don't have that, just get some aluminum foil and wrap it all the way around and then tape it down with duct tape. Do not use duct tape alone because it's not conductive enough. Okay, obviously the ammo can is not large enough to store my laptop, so I've gotta make my own Faraday cage. No problem. I'm gonna do it inside of this box and wrap this box completely with aluminum foil. Heavy duty aluminum foil is critical because it needs to be about 24 microns thick. And that's what that is. And I'm gonna use two layers of it to make sure that it's thick enough. Avoid mylar. You cannot use this to protect your stuff. 
because the aluminum foil inside this mylar is only six microns thick and that's not enough. You can use anti-static bags. If you order some memory or something online and they ship it to you inside of an anti-static bag, that'll work. I've tested the cardboard and of course it doesn't conduct. I've even tested it wet and it still didn't conduct. But my tester works at very low voltages. So I put a towel in here. I'm also gonna put a pack of desiccant because if I pack this on a hot, humid day and then wrap it in foil and then store it at the bug out location, when it gets cold, that moisture inside the box might condense on my components. So include a pack of desiccant in there to absorb the moisture inside of your box. All right, now put your stuff inside the box and make sure you can see here that we're wrapping this all the way around so it's not gonna touch. You know, for additional protection, you can put your stuff inside of a lock sack. You can use any tape because all you're doing is attaching the aluminum foil and making sure it doesn't fly off or open up a big gap. Now, We've achieved the primary objective here, which is to completely surround our electronics with a conductive material. Now, obviously, the way I've packaged this is only good for storage right there at the bug out location. If I'm gonna transport it, then I need to put some padding inside so it doesn't get shaken around. If you're gonna build your own Faraday cage, you do need to understand a few principles. I'll have them at the blog. I've only kind of touched the highlights here. I'll have everything you need to know at the blog, survivalnewsonline.com, and some further reading in case you want to do some more research. Be sure and check out all the information I've got there. I'll see you at the blog.